Welcome back to The Breakfast. The Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has advocated an independent process in the appointment of judges. He said this was crucial to judicial reforms given the significant roles they play in the polity, economy, social justice and democracy. Oshimbajo spoke on Saturday at the Justice Research Institute JRI virtual roundtable themed selection and appointment of judges lessons for Nigeria. Oshimbajo stated that the integrity of the judicial system was crucial to everything in the society. Joining us live is Bolanle Ulubani, a legal practitioner, and also uh, live with us this morning, uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawale, also a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm going to start with... Good um, morning. Thanks for having me. I, I want to start with uh, Mr. Ulubani this morning. Do you share the uh, same views with the Vice President? And how vital would you say these reforms are for a better judicial system in Nigeria? Well, to a certain extent, I share the same views. Only up to the point that it's not just enough to have an independent process of appointment of judges. What about the political interference and the political influence that the executive branch of government always brings to bear on the judiciary of the state and at the federal level. Because once you make the appointing authority, the chief executive of the executive arm at the state and at the federal level, there is bound to be some form of influence exerted on judges. And there are also back channels that can be used to influence certain things or make those judges face what you call political influence. So it's not just to have an independent means of appointing them. The appointing authority must also be dealt with. That is, who is the appointing authority? All right, so, so you, don't, you don't think or do you feel that the uh, current state of, uh, of course, uh, our current administration has shown that um, will to respect and, of course, um, also do as you have suggested? Well, if a civil servant is um, appointed by the Civil Service Commission and there are judicial service commissions in every state, I think that the head of the judiciary should be responsible for the appointment of judges in each state. The commission does whatever it is that is due diligence, sets up the terms and conditions for appointment, even to the point of making them pass exams, competency exams, and oral interviews, interactive sessions. And that's where it should stop. Once you bring a situation where the chief executive of a state or the federation is responsible solely for determining who becomes a judge, then, of course, that means that there's political influence involved. And it can affect the outcome and the tenure and the performance of such a judge in the long run. All right. Before we move to uh, uh, Nick Kolawole this morning, this position, um, I'm, I'm still speaking with um, Mr. Lubani now, this position is coming from not just the vice president, but also from a, a former attorney general of Lagos State who had obviously um, dealt with this, you know, um, circles before. I, I want to know what you think with regarding um, not just making political statements but actually taking action with regards changing uh, the process of recruitment of judges? Um, is this question for Mr. Kola Wale or me? Mr. Alubani, yes. Still, still okay. with you. Well, yeah. well, political statements are more or less promises and aspirational comments. The practicality of effecting those suggestions or those positions is another matter entirely. Which chief executive of a state or the federation will allow his influence to wane or to be removed in the influence of the appointment of judges? You know, it's these same judges that constitute electoral panels, judicial service, uh, judicial inquiry, and all manner where the judiciary is involved in the administration of justice and governance in Nigeria. 
So they want to have a say, they want to have a role. We've seen a situation where a judge in Lagos State, out of turn, was being proposed to become the chief judge in Oshun State. But for the intervention of right thinking and dispassionate people at the National Judicial Council, it would have happened as if it were a military regime. That same person, that same judge, is also, notwithstanding the order of precedence of judges, is being proposed for the Supreme Court. Tell me there's no judicial, uh, there's no political influence on the appointment of judges to the judiciary. All right. Now, now, so it's one thing to say something. It's one thing to be able to carry it out. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, now, talking about carrying it out, let's uh, now speak with uh, Tunde Kolawale. Um, I'm going to bring in the legislature here. There are many lawyers in both chambers, including the speaker. Um, do you feel that they can work towards this much routed independence of the judiciary? What, uh, thanks for having me. What well, it is possible, but let me quickly say that um, what the vice president um, has been repeated to have said is nothing new. It is something that some of us have been advocating for for a long, long time. But because the media has been said the media is the message. Because it is coming from the vice president and the senior advocate of Nigeria and the professor of law, he seems to have gotten a greater bite this time around. So like I said, it is nothing that is impossible if there is a political way. If we all want an independent judiciary, a judiciary that is going to be impartial, a judiciary which hands will never be tied in the dispensation of justice, then the suggestion made by the vice president is really the way to go, whether we like it or not. Oh, okay, go, go on. That is my take on that for now. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, I'm really seeking um, uh, to clarify who you feel might have been lagging behind with making these changes. Um, because like you've said, um, this is something that you have spoken about numerous times and it's not, it's not new. Um, so who do you think may have been holding back from making these adjustments and, and changing these um, parts of our, our law? Well, it's the executive arm of government. When you look at uh, our environment, you find out that the executive arm of government have always wanted to control both the legislature and then the judiciary. Uh, each time there has been a coup in the past, I would have had many rules. The executive arm of government has always been there. What gets demolished? Most times, the legislature, and what gets trampled upon, and which powers are never given, is the judiciary. So, I will want to say with all the emphasis at my disposal, that it is the executive arm of government that should really initiate some of these suggestions. That has been made. All right. The Nigerian Bar Association, because, of course, if, um, if you've been following, also just elected its new president. Do you also feel the NBA have a role in this? And how do you think they may want to go about this as a pressure group? Well, uh, thank you. Well, um, in the appointment of judges, the NBA has always been taking a uh, uh, long, their opinion has always been so. I'm aware that this time uh, persons are nominated to become judges. Their names are always forwarded to the branches of the NBA in the state in which they are to be appointed for them to make uh, an input. And uh, each time some of these things have happened, 
Jane Bee has always made her name clear. But I'm aware that there has been instances in which the NBA has said this person is not suitable or is not fit to be made a judge. But the executive arm of government has still gone ahead to impose such persons uh, as judges. We also find out most times too, the National Judicial Council, the NGF, had always overridden the input of the Nigerian Bar Association when it comes to things like that. So, if we are doing, going to carry out the kind of reform that has been proposed, we must make sure that whoever has an input to make, whatever entries they make must be taken to the side of. It's not, it should not be a uh, uh, rule. And then people impose their judges. When there are objections, so they are being made so. All right. And um, let's go back to uh, Bolan Leo Lugbani now. I want to, you know, get your reaction to the same question. Uh, the Nigerian Bar Association, new president, um, and of course, um, do, how do you think they should go about this as a pressure group? Um, Go ahead, please. Well, the Nigeria Bar Association is a stakeholder in the justice sector. Uh, it's lawyers who become judges. And definitely, the MBA uh, is even represented at the National Judicial Council by the president of the MBA. It's the final determining body on appointment, discipline, and promotion of judges. So that said, the other way by which this reform can come is one, if the executive sponsors a bill for these reforms and the consequential constitutional amendment, or the judiciary committee of the Senate or the House of Reps can, you know, order a public sitting on the true independence of the judiciary, where stakeholders will submit memoranda, and that those memoranda will be compiled and filtered into a bill which will reflect the true intent and the reforms needed to really reform the justice sector and the appointment of judges. So it can be initiated by the executive arm and the legislative arm if we are really serious and there's a political will to do the needful. But we find out that politicians by nature are extremely selfish. They are calculations in the present and for the future. And the implication of being such a reform may be calculated to be against their selfish interest when it comes to the outcome of judicial uh, and electoral petitions, uh, you know, after elections, and all what not that affects the interest of politicians. So these selfish calculations may be a hindering factor in them doing what is necessary as elected members of the legislature. So, but the NBA can take a more proactive, you know, uh, step by doing campaigns, you know, some form of orientation in all of the media, staging demonstrations and uh, doing all what is necessary to send a strong message to both the executive and the legislative arm at the state and federal level for such a reform. I think right. if there's a push, something will move. 